hello everybody. Welcome back to my channel, Red Elevator. I'm Nina Takish. This is the Red Elevator. And today we are going to look at the three newest emerging interior design styles and the absolute hottest material taking over. You do not want to miss this. Follow me. Today, as so many of you have asked, I am wearing a brand new blazer dress from Zara. We will link this in the description box. My shoes are not new and they are from J. Crew. The very first trend we're going to talk about, which I know you guys have seen and I have actually implemented in some of my design work, by the way, yes, here I am going to shamelessly plug my Instagram handle at Nina Takesh. If you are not following me, you're missing out because I am styling, I'm designing behind the scenes. Make sure and subscribe not only to this channel, takes a second, but also to my Instagram where you're going to learn a lot behind the scenes, great interior information. Back to the very important new trend that I wanted to talk about called Japandi. Now, what Japandi is, is a mixture of Japan and Scandinavia. What does that mean? Well, it means that we are incorporating a lot of feng shui, which is very important in Japanese design, but also in what I believe to be mental health and general positivity and the way that the energy flows through the room. And the last thing that I wanted to say about Japandi is the fact that it also is very organized, structural, and voluminous sort of shapes that come together in a very organized way. So if you look at some of these images that we're providing for you, you're going to see a great deal of neutral tones. You've got a lot of terracottas and whites, all rooted in what I call structured minimalism. You've got beautiful shapes. Look at the lanterns in this particular living room or look at, for instance, the chair that's sitting in this particular living space with beautiful oak details. And the essence of Japandi style is really bringing the outdoor in, which we have talked about quite a bit in 2022 and again in 2021. But this is a trend that is really focusing on white space. You'll see a lot of white space in these pictures, uh, whether they're with the genre chairs or whether it's a dining room that has mid-century lights and sort of white spaces, whether it's the carpeting and the walls. This style also has a lot of sculpture cultural elements, you'll see, you know, curvaceous chairs, chairs that have uh, beautiful backs, rounded rugs, oval is a big emphasis, round is a big emphasis, coffee tables with uh, ribbed edges are a big emphasis, a lot of warm, neutral leather, like worn in leather. So it's not about being slick and being clean and being shiny. It's about being weathered, used, but clean, if that makes any sense. But I think you'll notice when you're looking at these images, such as the shower that is no longer tiled now, we're using a lot of plaster and showers, and we're doing this um, all around in not only my projects, but you'll see a lot of this in Architectural Digest and other leading home magazines. And it really is something that is very soothing and has the element of wood. The next style I wanted to focus on today is called the Grand Millennial. You probably have heard rumblings of the Grand Millennial and have wondered, what is that? Well, I'm here to tell you that Grand Millennial is what we used to call the new traditional. Essentially, Grand Millennial is the evolution of traditional. And the millennials have a great spin on Grand Millennial because it is a style that is rooted mostly in maximalism. You'll see displaying collectibles becomes part of this design. There is a lot of wallpaper. Sustainability is important to the millennials, as it is, of course, to non-millennials. It's very important to me, I should say, because you want to be able to find vintage pieces. You guys know I love vintage pieces. I love scavenger hunting. I love going to state sales. And the Grand Millennials are very much like that. They want to put things together that are very juxtaposed. You'll have wallpaper that's very floral. For example, in this room with the green wallpaper, and then you will have, you know, a very interesting um, vintage light that sits above it. And other rooms that you're going to see here, you're going to have 
have, again, a lot of that pop of color. There is a lot of color in Grand Millennial. They're not afraid to layer things and bring things together. And this style is really fun. It's a really fun style. I love visiting homes that are like this because it brings a lot of visual interest. For example, this is the epitome of the Grand Millennial. You have this very interesting room with pink walls, a beautiful Kagan velvet sofa, and a beautiful emerald green. You have a mirror that's very asymmetrical, and then you have curtains that are really mixed up. They'll have velvet, and they'll have trim, and they'll have tassels, and they'll have other fabrics. It's really maximalism at its finest, but it's done in a way that is very purposeful, and it's done in a way that is very, very fun for the eyes. Again, this is the polar opposite of Japandi, yet a very interesting and fun style. The third emerging style that we're gonna talk about today before we get into the hottest material out there that I can't wait to share with you is called Neotenic Design. What might be Neotenic Design, you ask? Well, it is rooted in the word, meaning it comes from the word neotony. And for those of you who don't know what neotony means, it actually means it is rooted in childlike features. The best way to illustrate this would be actually to show you these photos of these rooms that have a lot of this neoteny, shall we say, this neotenic design. For example, you'll have this gorgeous mirror that is by the very famous Ettore Sotsas, which is you know, trending everywhere, but it is a very, very gorgeous sort of wavy mirror. Again, these are exaggerated childlike shapes that you do not expect to see in furniture. There's a lot of curvaceous um, lines. Everything is fun, playful, and whimsical. There is, again, a use of color. You'll see chairs that are yellow or pops of orange, things that are really don't look like they're in scale, but then come together beautifully. I would gather to say that this style is going to be around for quite some time and because of the fact that it really grabs your attention and it really makes a statement within your home. So it's not just about having a beautiful home, but it's about making a statement. What does your house represent about you? The last, the first hottest trend that is happening in interior design is the material terrazzo. And terrazzo is fantastic because it is almost um, indestructible. Essentially, for those of you who don't know, terrazzo is a mix of concrete with leftover pieces of marble or granite that are mixed and crushed in together. And what I love about terrazzo is that over time, the more you have it and the more you use it, especially for floors, it just sort of polishes itself and you will find new life brought out into it. You'll see specks of the marble that has been um, sort of um, mixed together in the concrete with it. You'll see parts of any granite that's in there and then essentially you have lots of little specks of color and this was very 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 hot in the 50s and 60s especially in Los Angeles you'll see a lot of these mid-century homes had terrazzo and now we're like saving it we are definitely not tearing it out we love it and you are also seeing terrazzo tiles um, I took you guys to waterworks um, approximately a week or two weeks ago which you guys really enjoyed and I showed you terrazzo tiles you are people are making them because of the fact that they are um, very uh, um, cost-effective actually because it's residues that have been left over from other projects or other materials that have been cut but also they're very durable and there is a huge ability to customize terrazzo by color so if you look at some of these images that I have here for you today you're gonna see terrazzo stairs which I think are incredible along with sort of a black um, handrail that is uh, very sort of striking next to it that gives it sort of that more modern terrazzo look terrazzo is also also being used quite a bit in kitchens but in beautiful colors like this green backsplash you see in the kitchen with the pink backdrop terrazzo is being used quite a bit not only in living rooms foyers but bathroom bathroom floors are notoriously hard to keep clean and to really water resistance and so what's great about this is that it's really indestructible it'd be like being by the pool, you know, where you have concrete, you have now terrazzo. So I really, really, truly love the um, the use of terrazzo. We also apply it to certain elements in furniture design. You're gonna see it in tables, you'll see it in, um, 
sculptural pieces, even in art, walls, you name it, Terrazzo is taking over. And I hope it's here for a while because it really is, well, considering it was born in the 1800s in Italy, I can't imagine it's gonna be gone anytime soon. Thank you so much for joining me on this week's episode of The Red Elevator. I love coming to you guys. I come to life when the camera turns on and I get to talk about interior design with you. I hope you're enjoying this channel. And if you are, I'm gonna ask you, please, please, please to let me know what you love most. Do you wanna see more interior design tips? Do you wanna see more um, shop with me? What is it that interests you? After all, I'm doing this for you, not for any other reason. And I'd love to hear what you have to say. A special shout out to my fabulous, wonderful subscribers. I want to recognize Laura Salveson, Diane Osgood, and of course, Shaheen Hatefi. You guys are fantastic. Thank you for watching. Thank you for chiming in. Thank you for being loyal. And I can't wait to see you guys again next week on the Red Elevator. Have a good week.